I, I think what we're going to do is, is, is be fairly brief because we don't have an enormous amount of time. And I just wanted to make a couple of the, the reflections, I think, rather than, comment, uh, than questions. But if you want to come back, perhaps then to do that or pick up in, in, in response. Um, Hank, the thing which you said perhaps most soberingly of all is that the time frame for thinking about projects, whether they are big or small, is so profoundly short that the time for innovation is now. And in that spirit, I want us to park the discussion, and Jose, I think you did it really well, of big versus small. Um, my sense is that it's, it's, there's space for both. It's the question of how, how they interact. Lots of, of, of provocations from very different kinds of projects. And what struck me most, perhaps, is that we have, just as we have the money globally, we have the design skills, and we have the project management skills. What worries me, and I want to speak to the silences I saw in the images, is we didn't see a single face. We didn't hear anything about where the money actually comes from and how complicated it is to manage. And we didn't talk about any big projects that are not run through conventional corporate firms. So we ignored the big slums, which are frankly big projects. They may not be ones that we laud, that we see as successful, but to think of somewhere like Kibera as anything other than a big project, which has the backing of particular interest groups and functions in particular kinds of ways and has its own sort of design logic, even though we may see that it is dysfunctional, seems to me to be an error. It exists as an entity within the city with its own logic in some ways separate from but connected to uh, the city. And so I just want to sort of think about that as, as we go forward. So as we just open this up and perhaps look for a response, m my question to you is would we not learn more about big projects by being quite self-critical about what the contribution of the big project is to where Ed started us off from, which was to say, if we're going to be bold about this, if we're going to claim the city as our future, what is it that we can do and how do we do it better? And what are the limits of the big project and the top-down approach in that regard? Yes, well, um, if you ask me uh, where does the money come from and um, conventional corporate firms, uh, I'd like to report from Hamburg where there is a very unique constellation because the um, land of the harbor um, is being put in a, in a special firm, which is a corporation, but the firm is 100% in property of the um, city. And consequently, the urban design is, as you have see, been seeing, um, divided into a public space system with rather small uh, scale plots. And these small scale plots are not, they do not, for instance, give a whole area um, of a pier out to one developer, but the plots, the blocks are uh, tendered out uh, piece for piece uh, by competition. Uh, consequently, uh, the program, the uh, financial offer, the diversity in, uh, in architecture and the quality is, uh, uh, is, is subject to the judgment um, of who will get it. And the one who get it gets the land in ownership, not in lease, in full ownership. And from this revenue, the uh, public space and uh, technical and uh, traffic infrastructure is financed. And there's a calculation over 30 years where in the end this has to be break even. Um, and um, they did it uh, they made a mistake once because the center of the area has a big shopping center, a hotel with cruise terminal and, uh, and so on. And they thought they tender it out, 300,000 square meters, and they tendered it out to a consortium of German and Dutch firms. And um, when the crisis in 2008-10 uh, came, uh, one of them went bankrupt. The Dutch banks were not allowed to put money into it anymore, and the developments were stuck. But all the other developments they went on. So it was a very clear sign uh, how to deal with uh, development. Um, and of course, as a matter of f fact, these developments have to be always uh, a robust public space and street uh, framework, uh, which allows for adaptiveness. 
and change according to demand. I'm curious, picking up on that case, and maybe uh, I was struck by your image, Jose, which at the end uh, there, which had a number of things about, you know, allowing for mistakes and allowing experimentation, um, and failure, and, and non-professionals. Um, I'm very curious, you and Hank, and then and you into this as well. I mean, I'm struck when we were doing the Olympics and we were thinking about how to uh, diverse, you know, diversify the economy uh, on the Olympic Park. So we did a big trip out to Silicon Valley with ministers from government to talk to, you know, venture capitalists and see what they said. And we sat down with them and they said, the first thing they said to us was, the problem with the way you're approaching this is you won't invest, we only invest in 25 year olds, you won't in talk to anyone if they're not over 60. They said you have a cultural problem, which is you don't, you won't uh, encourage risk, uh, you won't encourage uh, failure, uh, experimentation. A lot of what we heard this morning was about allowing for that. How does that fit into these big systems you're talking about? Hank, you talked about it here, right? You had to get all the government aligned, but allow for experimentation, allow for local forces to organize. Curiously, the same thing, Ed, you know, big infrastructure and the ruthlessness you talked about. How does that allow for this? And Jose, your meeting of the middle. I'm very curious, because how do these systems and the culture, the culture of planning, the culture of governance, allow for this kind of thing to happen and still address these big challenges? With Rebuild by Design after Hurricane Sandy, there's, there's two things. One, there's $60 billion, not as a promise, as with the Green Climate Fund, it's, it's an empty promise. No, it's real. It comes from the federal budget. So we had a room full of New York investors that had a totally different response than your uh, venture capital, capital, capitalist, capitalist in, uh, uh, investors in, uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, we said, why don't we make a match? 60 billion of the federal government with a private, we, we can find any structure uh, to uh, get up, get, get, come to a financial uh, match. Not, not interested come with solid projects with a short time frame and once you get them we might be able to invest so there was no contribution from the private sector second your question on how do you organize experimentation in such a distrusted place uh, is by uh, it we created like a safe place uh, where everybody could step in uh, and organize themselves around. That meant that everybody was always at the same table. Federal government was there as much as communities. That took a while, uh, of course. My team, starting on Rebuild by Design, got hate mail from Staten Island saying, get out, we don't want to see you, and don't want to see those designers, nor the people from the federal government. But we went back and back and back and started to build up this relationship. So there was a stubbornness to organize, but also the promise of delivery. And now that's the challenge uh, for, in this case, New York City or New York State uh, or New Jersey to actually deliver on that promise. New York's doing pretty well, but New Jersey is uh, not doing well on that promise. Jose, what, uh, what do we tell uh, Juan Klaus about, what, about planning? How should he be thinking about planning in your scheme? I think he knows it all, by the way. <laughs> no, I, I think there's a, a if uh, Sue kind of alluded to the elephant in the room here, which is the question of democracy. And um, as I was uh, watching Ed's uh, diagrams of correlation between uh, uh, GDP and urbanization, uh, and I know he's not a political scientist, but I'm actually uh, wanting to, to see the diagram between the correlation between autocratic rules uh, and, uh, and urbanization. And most of the projects, and this is where the, the, the democratic deficit in Latin America becomes paradoxical in the context of uh, these heroic projects that I, that I showed. So some people still have a kind of nostalgia for the Brasilias, or if not those Brasilias, but at least, at least the level of control on the transformation of the territory. So from Humboldt and the Law of Indies, to Lucio Costa or Mario Pani, there's still a kind of nostalgia, both from the inside of the discipline, but also from the politicians' side. Um, so that, I think there's a democratic deficit, which at the same time needs to be reimagined be, beyond the nimbism, for sure. There's a piece on the New York Times last week on the, 
uh, academic studies on the correlation between uh, inequality and nimbism in, in Boulder, uh, Colorado. And um, I think it's, uh, it's important to lay out that beyond the ballot, beyond the picket, beyond the protest, there can or should be room for different forms of engaging uh, uh, democratic processes. The, the other thing which is, 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 is that, um, and it's been alluded over the past 48 hours, which is there's a possibility to decouple planning from time, something which Raul has insisted with his notion of ephemerality and kineticness. Uh, the, the notion of uh, decoupling planning uh, or, uh, and participation and knowing when it works well together, as the last panel showed, and de decoupling it also from scale. Uh, and scale, I mean uh, the amount, the resources allocated to a project. In 1997, $100 million were invested in the Guggenheim Bilbao. Nowadays, as a kind of benchmark, are we better off producing four museums of $25 million? Uh, or, or 100 uh, museums of 1 million? That's, I think those are questions that beg uh, tentative answers. By the way, not a, ju a jubilee line is not going to get built bottom up and, uh, or the redevelopment of Singapore. You know, so so just, to, just to answer the democracy urbanization link, so there, there are two things going on, one of which is that initial urbanization in some period does typically predict the transition from autocracy to democracy, although that can often be very messy, messy as we've seen lately in the Arab Spring. But, but certainly those uprisings began in cities as they have been for hundreds of years where cities facilitate the democratic connection. Secondly, though, the countervailing force is that dictatorships have much larger primate cities. So when you compare dictatorships with democracies, the average size of the largest city in a dictatorship is 40% higher than the average size of the largest city in a democracy, in part because people flock around power like ants do around a, a picnic, uh, and in parts because dictators like you know, just build themselves massive points of infrastructure. But I want to come back to this thing, which I think you know, everyone's tried to emphasize, that it's not a battle between small and large, right? It's about both. And in so many cases with urban services, there are two ways of solving the problem. You can have your own pit latrine, or you can have a sewer system. You can have a septic system in between. You can have a jitney, right? Or you can have a, a large scale, you can have a gout train on the, on, the other, on the other side. You can have a shack built in the back, or you can build large scale public housing projects. And it's not that the answer is always one versus the other. Lots of cases, I have sympathy for the idea of upgrading the jitney slowly in an Istanbul model rather than moving immediately to a large-scale, uh, hyper-technological answer. In the case of sewers, in the case of water, I think there's more of a case for moving towards a large-scale technological intervention. But you, in that case, you still need to be engaged with the community. You still need to be listening, which is what's so beautiful about what Hank was talking about. So it's, it's not one versus the other. It's both. And it always means that the large-scale interventions need to be informed by the, by the people on the ground, because it's ultimately for them. With the, can, can I use it with one of the projects, which was called the Big U, uh, which focused on Manhattan solely? Uh, in regards to sea level rise, climate change, and uh, anything that came across. There was this, of course, this, uh, let's build a wall around it, like uh, Robert Moses would do, and then you, have, you, know, you can calculate how much you protect. And since there's so much ass assets at risk, you can also you know, turn it into a, a relevant one. But they came up with a very, like, uh, not bottom-up, but small-scale approach. Uh, street by street, community by community, block by block, they went around, around Manhattan finding solutions that actually would fit and give that added value we talked about. So on the Lower East Side, of course, with uh, social housing, low-income housing, solutions for protection of Manhattan came out totally different than in Battery Park, where there's private capital to invest in, uh, and you get bigger infrastructure in a different way uh, done. So the idea, which then you could call the plan or planning, was big. Uh, but the outcome uh, turned out into like a, a, a chain of events and the process therefore was critical. So you're asked for, do, does the architect or the designer need one type set of skills? No, it's a set uh, of experts and, expert and non-experts to collectively that actually are able to deliver on such an idea. I think we're at uh, 4.10. We went a little bit over, so we're going to um, wrap up this session now. I'm sorry we didn't... Ah, hold on, Case. We'll give you... Yeah. you have a response before we wrap up? 
I, I think the example of um, um, uh, high-speed railway lines, for instance, is, uh, in a democracy is very uh, good because it's going to be there. It has, to be, it has been decided on a higher democratic level. It's going to be there, and then it has to be implemented. What is extremely lacking um, in the community of, uh, implement, of people who implement plans and who work on plans is the knowledge where you have impact and where you don't. This is a, this is a, a new science, in my uh, view, that has not been developed very well. Well, I think on that note, I guess what I'm hearing from folks, not to try to summarize this, but I mean, we have quite a juxtaposition between this morning and this afternoon of trying to deal at different, different scales, different uh, sense of time, uh, but it's not the either or of big versus small. A lot is in the very design of both the processes, the democratic processes, the skill sets that allow us to operate at different levels and create systems that frankly are not closed but open to experimentation and to allowing uh, attention to exist, uh, but at the same time to try to allow for many, many solutions to the complexity of urbanization. So I don't think we've resolved that uh, one way or the other, but I think we have some insights into uh, how maybe even some of these large-scale projects and processes can be structured in ways that are more uh, inclusive.